Now, how about EC or PPM? This is another thing that when you're growing with synthetic nutrients, people tend to monitor it more closely than growing organics. Do you think when growing organics, you should just be completely hands off when it comes to the EC and PPM? Or do you think that should be monitored as well? You know, it's difficult in like row ag, things like that. But if you're doing organic agriculture in pots or in containers, then absolutely, I would monitor the uh, EC of what you're what you're putting on and what you're co- what's coming off of the plants. That's really going to tell you um, basically what's going to the plant because it's basically a simple math equation. You have this much nitrates, and then you put it on the plant, and then at the end when you're watering, you have this much nitrates. So maybe in the course of a couple of days, you you take the average of those numbers and you say like, oh yeah, so it's using this much nitrate. So that it, it can be just as useful in a soil world as it is in hydroponic. You can control it. The you can control the inputs a lot more precisely in hydroponics. Um, it's going to be a little bit more of a longer wave function when it comes to your um, corrections in organic agriculture. But the potential to make those corrections are still there. So monitoring your ECs is very important, especially if you're doing like you said, well water with like 7.5 pH. Because like I said, that probably means you have a ton of dissolved solids in there as well. And if you have a ton of dissolved solids, you want to make sure that you're not over applying the salty, probably calcium or maybe even sodium laden water onto an organic bed. So there's a lot of different little considerations when it comes to um, like the EC and what that EC is made of. And that's why we don't, that's why I typically don't recommend people use PPM as a measurement of nutrient concentration in their solution because I mean what scale is it first of all are you using the 500 or the 700 scale what size particle like and are you using a blue lab meter are you using an EC meter to measure that PPM because all it's doing is taking the EC data and multiplying it by a number you know so PPM is very hard to judge the the true measure of uh, like a PPM number would be to take that liquid go get it analyzed and then find out exactly what's in it at what concentrations so we don't like to use PPM. EC is is just electrical conductivity. How much salt is in this solution? How much ionic bonds got broken into this liquid? And that is, I think, a better indicator of plant health, plant health on the fly or root zone health on the fly. And then once your EC ranges are out of range, that's when you can really like take that water and get it tested. You know, ideally you would do periodic testing anyway, but that EC is going to be a simpler indicator. And if you know what's going on your plants and your plants are growing, then you can kind of assume that it's taking up at least the minimum of the balanced nutrition in order to grow. So you can kind of assume that what your leachate is going to come out as is typically going to be balanced. As soon as you start to see deficiencies or you start to see issues in uptake, you do that leachate test and if you're still within like a healthy leachate EC range of maybe 0.3 or 3 to 7, then you take that water into for testing and you go, oh, this is only 0.5 EC, but it's like literally all phosphorus in there. So we need to really dial back the phosphorus, dial everything else up a little bit, and then do a leachate test on a different pot a couple days later and then see where we're at at that point. And then you can kind of see that your number balancing out, your phosphate leachate goes down, and it balances out with all your other macronutrients that you should expect to fall out in a healthy root zone. So yeah, EC measuring and monitoring absolutely is, is critical in both regular conventional uh, hydroponics or in conventional like soil or, uh, yeah, like container soil grows. It's harder to measure, of course, in like row agriculture. Usually you just... Um, you go at scale and you let it rip for those guys. You, you do soil tests beforehand, you make all the necessary calculations, you plan your applications, and yeah, you just set it on autopilot, you let it rip. But in a controlled environment where you can control your inputs, whether it's in soil and pots or rock wool or any inert substrate, having that EC input output readout is, is extremely helpful and critical in dialing in a nutrient program. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.